So there's a very clear line between fasting for fat loss and fasting for longevity. So in this video, I'm gonna give you the critical points of each, what you should be doing if you're fasting for longevity versus what you should be doing if you're fasting for metabolic or fat loss reasons. Once again, they're very, very similar and there's certainly going to be some overlap, but if you're looking for one over the other, there's some critical points that you need to be paying attention to. Hey, you are locked and loaded into the internet's leading performance, fat loss, and nutrition channel. New videos coming out every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time and a bunch of other videos throughout the week. So please turn on that little bell icon so you can turn on notifications to know whenever I go live. And please check out highly.com so you can see the latest and greatest performance apparel that I'm always decked out in in my videos. All right, so like I said, you're always going to have some overlap, right? If you're fasting because you wanna burn some fat, you're certainly going to have some longevity benefit too. And if you're fasting for longevity reasons because you just wanna improve your cellular health and you wanna live for a long time, well, guess what? You're probably still gonna have some metabolic fat loss benefits as well. So there's definitely this gray area and this overlap. But if you're looking for two very clear, distinct separation points, that's what I'm gonna break down in this video. So let's go ahead and let's start with the digestive enzyme side. Not the most exciting, but honestly, it has a big role in how you feel and how your body functions. See, when you're fasting, your body stops producing digestive enzymes. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but it starts conserving what you already have. This increases what is called your enzyme potential. Okay, your enzyme potential is your body's ability to effectively break things down. So during a fast, when we're conserving enzyme production, the existing enzymes break down what's already in what's called the metabolic sphere. It starts breaking down proteins, it starts breaking down lipids. It makes the body function a lot better. It's one of the reasons why you feel so clean and lean and really actually feel like internally better when you're fasting. So this process is known as autolysis. Okay, autolysis is similar to autophagy, except it's actually when we're breaking down old cells, not just the components of an existing cell. So again, it's increasing the enzyme force. Now, a simple analogy that we can break down here is if you had a team of, say, 10 people that were working and they were really plugging away and doing a lot of work that was proactive, then all of a sudden you didn't have the ability to give them any more workload. So they have no choice but to continue to work on things that they were working on, but just do a better job. There's no new workflow coming in, so they're just gonna work on what they have in front of them, but do a better, more efficient, quality job. That's basically what's happening at the cellular level and the enzymatic level inside your body when you're going through a fast. Now, any little bit of food, any little bit of insulin, technically shuts this process down a little bit. It doesn't turn it off all the way, but it definitely slows it down. Okay, that means one calorie, two calorie, three calories. It stops the process at least a little bit. Now, it is important to know that calorie restriction alone conserves our enzymes too. Okay, studies have shown that even just lowering your caloric intake actually improves how your enzymes function, but nothing to the degree that you would get if you were actually fasting. Okay, so now the big thing that we have to focus on is something known as hormesis. Okay, hormesis plays a gigantic role in longevity. And before you turn off this video because you're confused about what hormesis is, let me explain it. It's very simple. Hormesis is putting our body through cellular stress. Okay, anytime we stress out our bodies, we have a state of hormesis. A simple example is you go into the gym and you work out and you put your muscles under stress. Well, as a result of that stress, your muscles grow bigger and stronger, or your heart improves, your cardiovascular system improves, everything gets better, right? That's because they're adapting to a degree of stress. Okay, well, your cells go through that process too, and it's very, very important. And that's ultimately what we're after when we're fasting for longevity purposes. All we're trying to accomplish is a conditioning the cells to get stronger and better at what they do. So any kind of stress can actually cause this to happen. So fasting, because you're depriving yourself of calories, but also exposing yourself to extreme heat, to extreme cold, or heck, even a little bit of oxidative stress, even some free radicals. It allows your cells to get a taste of stress, so they have no choice but to adapt and get stronger. Now again, the second that you have a calorie, it slows that process down. So what I wanna make sure is crystal clear with you is that we have two very distinct reasons that we're fasting, longevity and metabolic. So don't twist my words around and think that just because I'm telling you not to do something for the longevity reason means that you can't do it with the metabolic reason, okay? And everything's gonna make sense as I get through this video a little bit more. So let me take a look at a couple of different things for you. Okay, we have a fasting state and a fed state. And when I say fed state, I mean anywhere from one calorie to 10,000 calories. The second a calorie comes in, I'm gonna consider you fed. For these examples. So fasting versus fed. So IGF levels, when you're fasting, they plummet, they go down. 
IGF is what grows tissue. Okay, IGF will also grow tumor tissue. We want our IGF levels to go up sometimes, but most of the time we want them pretty low. The second that you're fed, IGF levels elevate. Okay, we don't want to be feeding ourselves all the time, then our IGF levels are going to be elevated all the time. That's how you end up like ultimately a bodybuilder, but also obese. Okay, we don't really want that situation. Okay, then we have mTOR. Okay, when you are fasting, mTOR is turned off. When you are fed, mTOR is turned on. mTOR stands for mammalian target of rapamycin, and what mTOR does is it triggers the body to become anabolic, building muscle and building fat. Now, of course, to some degree, we want little spikes of mTOR activation done at the right time, but most of the time we want it down low. So when you're fasting, mTOR is low. When you're fed, mTOR is higher. Okay, then we have autophagy, the buzzword. Everyone talks about autophagy. Autophagy is where your cells recycle their existing components to basically become more efficient. Okay, when you're fasting, autophagy is jacked up. As soon as you eat something, autophagy comes down. Now, I'll talk about coffee and tea and how this relates in just a second because there is some gray area. But lastly, when you're fasting, the FOXO3 gene elevates dramatically. The FOXO3 gene is all about longevity. It's known as the longevity gene. It turns on cellular rejuvenation. Okay, if we have that gene activated all the time, we'd probably live forever. It's a very powerful gene. So when we're fasting, that's elevated. Okay, when we're fed, that's turned off. Okay, so now we get into the fun stuff, the fat loss, right? Fasting for metabolic reasons. So again, a very clear line. I want you to put longevity over here and metabolic over here for a second. Okay, remember there is some crossover, but let's define them for a second. The metabolic benefits from fasting are all about the catecholamines, okay? It's all about the epinephrine. It's all about the norepinephrine and the adrenaline that's spiked. Again, because we are in a degree of stress or hormesis, our body has no choice but to start producing adrenaline. It's like, why aren't you feeding me? What's going on? Okay, this in turn activates what's called hormone-sensitive lipase. Whenever we activate adrenaline, basically our body dumps existing stored fuel into the bloodstream so we burn it. This activates hormone-sensitive lipase, which therefore turns on massive amounts of fat burning. So that's why you burn fat while you're fasting from a metabolic standpoint. Now additionally, catecholamines inhibit insulin production. So when we have a high degree of catecholamines, we're blunting insulin quite dramatically. But the second that we have insulin come into the equation again, catecholamines reduce. We're getting less of that metabolic benefit. Here's the interesting thing, okay? There's a toss-up. Things like coffee and things like tea technically have a couple of calories, right? So you might think, oh shoot, well that means I'm turning off the metabolic benefits and I'm turning off also the longevity benefits. Well the interesting thing is with coffee and tea, you're increasing catecholamines because coffee increases catecholamines. So you're actually accelerating the fat burning effect. So if you're fasting for metabolic reasons, not for longevity, coffee and tea will actually help you out immensely because they jack up your catecholamines even more. So you're already elevated, now you just elevated them more. You're gonna burn more fat, period. Okay, but it's different when we look at it for longevity. Okay, again, longevity, it's all about hormesis, right? So any insulin spike that you have is gonna stop that hormesis because it gives the body a break. The stress is there, and then all of a sudden a little insulin comes in, the stress comes off the body. You're not getting as much of a benefit. So there are a couple of things in which like coffee and tea, for example, can actually help in a longevity sense though. Okay, coffee and tea technically improve autophagy. So although you have some calories that come in that technically shut off some of the longevity benefits, autophagy goes up. Okay, so sure, you're still getting autophagy, but you're not activating the FOXO3 gene, stuff like that anymore. So again, a toss up. You're gonna get probably 25% of the longevity effects than you normally would, but you're not completely making yourself dead in the water. Okay, lastly, I wanna talk about telomeres for a second, because telomeres are everything when it comes down to just anti-aging, right? Telomeres are basically like the ends of a shoelace, right? Okay, so our cells have these shoelaces, for lack of a better term, and these shoelaces have little plastic tips, right? Just like our shoes, just like our shoelaces, right? And then if they start to break down, if those ends of the shoelace break down, the plastic tip breaks down, our shoelaces fray. Well, in the case of a cell, that's when a cell starts to deteriorate and die. It breaks down, it's all frayed now. Okay, now the interesting thing is our body's cells have an enzyme known as telomerase. Telomerase allows that shoelace end to regrow, but not all cells have that. But one of the most important cells in the body does have telomerase, and that's a stem cell. Stem cells produce the proteins that allow us to recover and allow us to heal. And because they produce telomerase, they have the ability to live for a long time in our body as long as we take care of them. 
Okay, so what's cool is that USC actually found that fasting improves stem cell production. So we have an improvement in stem cell production, and if we take care of ourselves, those stem cells can produce telomerase, which can allow cells to live longer and allow the stem cells to live longer and then multiply and give birth to what are called daughter cells and produce more stem cells. So long story short is if we fast for longevity purposes, we can actually get an improvement in telomere length, an improvement in stem cells, and therefore live for a longer time and have our cells be healthier. But again, a calorie breaks this. So what you have to determine for yourself is this. How many days are you going to fast for longevity reasons? And what days are you going to fast for metabolic reasons? The benefit here is that when you fast for longevity, you by default get the metabolic benefit. When you fast for metabolic reasons, you don't necessarily get longevity. So when in doubt, if you're looking for both, fast for longevity with your intention towards longevity and you'll get the metabolic effect. But if you're purely fasting for fat loss, you can disregard some of the longevity components, enjoy your coffee, enjoy your tea, and know that you're gonna get that accelerated catecholamine effect. It's gonna cause you to be lean, mean, and everything you wanna be. So as always, make sure you're locked in here on my channel. If you have ideas for future videos, be sure to put them down in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next video.